One of the most buzzed about debut albums in years is also one of the most polarizing. Is Greta Van Fleet just aping the past or blazing the path to rock's future? My review of Anthem of the Peaceful Army is coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name is Kyle and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. So I'm going to be reviewing the new Greta Van Fleet album today, but before we get going, I want to let you know to stick around at the end of the video. I'll go ahead and include a short unboxing of the CD if you're interested to see what the packaging and the liner notes looks like. I usually do unboxings in separate videos, so be sure to let me know what you think about tacking them on to the end of reviews down in the comments section below. Alright, so let's address the elephant in the room right off the bat. Greta Van Fleet sounds a lot like Led Zeppelin. In particular, the lead singer sounds ridiculously similar to Robert Plant. Now, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know here. I mean, if you know just one thing about Greta Van Fleet, it's got to be that they're the new band that sounds a lot like Led Zeppelin. In fact, that point of comparison has all but dwarfed the band's music, and it's made them one of the most divisive rock acts in years. On one side, we have the fans that love what the band is doing and see them as representing the return of guitar-based rock and roll, as if nobody played guitar anymore. On the other side, we have the haters, the people who find Greta Van Fleet to be completely unoriginal, a glorified tribute band. So let's face it, there's no way to avoid the comparison. So far, the band has done nothing to distance their sound from that of the rock gods that inspired them. And for better or worse, that similarity is so utterly striking that it makes it really hard to get past the resemblance while listening at first so that you can truly hear Greta Van Fleet. The first time you hear these songs, it's all but unavoidable that you'll be spending a lot of time thinking to yourself, wow, that sounds just like Zeppelin, or man, that dude sounds exactly like Robert Plant. And let me just say, when it comes to the debate about whether or not Greta Van Fleet stole their sound from Led Zeppelin, I think the answer is yes, they did. And I'm okay with that. See, here's the thing. In every genre of music, success breeds imitators. It's inevitable that when one act happens upon a sound that resonates with the masses, a dozen more acts will adopt a similar sound to try to achieve similar success. Rarely, of course, do bands sound as strikingly similar as Greta Van Fleet does to Led Zeppelin, which is what maybe makes this a unique case. But what I found fascinating here is the fact that although Greta Van Fleet is making music that sounds like it could have come out 40 years ago, it still does not at all sound out of place in 2018. It still feels fresh in that regard. Undeniably retro, to be sure, but still with a modern flair. And why not? After all, we've spent the past half decade hearing bands revisit the sounds of the 80s, which I must admit, I've enjoyed. Could we now be on the verge of a new decade? In any case, it's often said that when it comes to musical imitation, if you're going to steal, steal from the best. No doubt, that's what's happening with Greta Van Fleet. And if you've got the balls to craft your sound this blatantly around that of one of rock's greatest bands, you better be able to deliver the goods. Does Greta Van Fleet deliver the goods? Boy, that's bound to be a hot topic of debate for this album and for everything they release in the future. To my ear, though, I think that the band does a more than admirable job on their first full-length outing. Anthem of the Peaceful Army is a solid effort by any reasonable measure, but certainly not without its flaws, which I'll get into in a moment. The album starts out strong with Age of Man, a song full of the kind of mystical themes, both lyrically and musically, that were so commonplace in 70s rock music. At just over six minutes, it's also the longest track on the album. I've seen some people commenting that it goes on too long, but I'm actually not put off by that. I think it works and lets the song build and develop in a way that feels appropriate and lends to a really epic sound. Speaking of sound, I think it's also interesting that Josh's vocals on this opening track are the least like Robert Plant of anything on the album. What I actually hear from the very first line of the song is more of a Getty Lee kind of sound. In fact, there's, there's more than a little bit of a Rush vibe here. But as the cold wind kicks in on track two, Josh goes full-on Robert Plant mode and stays there pretty much for the rest of the album. His howls and wails here are textbook Zeppelin, to be sure. The song itself... 
unremarkable for me, feel free to skip it, because the next track is probably the best on the album. When the Curtain Falls is hands down great rock and roll. It's no wonder that this was selected as the album's first single. It's truly an incredible jam that calls to mind some of the Black Crow's best rockers. The problem is the band is setting the bar incredibly high with this song. For many listeners, this may be their first introduction to Greta Van Fleet, and I think as such it does a great job justifying why they may be much more than just Led Zeppelin soundalikes. But from here on out, with just a couple exceptions, it's kind of downhill. Track 4, Watching Over, shows you exactly what I mean. For one thing, this is probably the most Led Zeppelin-esque song on the album, and if you can't get past that strong resemblance, you may not make it any further into this album. Personally, I'm okay with the similarities, but what we start to hear on this song are elements I find much more problematic. On Watching Over, we get musical accents and even a solo of what tries to pass as a sitar. Now, I'm pretty sure it's not a real sitar, probably a guitar made to sound that way, but it's not a sitar and it's distracting to the point of being cheesy for the first time on the album and not the last, I'm afraid. The vibe I'm getting more than any other is Spinal Tap. Now that borderline classic rock parody feeling mostly goes away on Lover Lever. This is one of the album highlights, predominantly for its driving rhythm and melody. Musically, this is as strong as anything, but sometimes it runs the risk of being undone by its paint-by-numbers lyrics. I feel like these songs seem to either toe the line of 70s style lyricism, or they barrel shamelessly into every cliche imaginable, with lines like, she's an angel straight from hell, the verses here feel like they're a copy and paste effort from a classic rock songbook. Thankfully, the pure simplicity of the chorus saves the day. On tracks 6 and 7, we get a pair of songs that lean more strongly on acoustic guitar, which at this point injects a well-needed feeling of something organic into the album. That, along with the organ backing, gives You're the One that Black Crow's vibe again, this time more in the vein of She Talks to Angels. The New Day sustains that feeling, but to a lesser effect than the previous song. It's kind of filler in that it's inoffensive and borderline forgettable. Next on Mountain of the Sun, the band seems to be aiming for heights similar to Lover, Lever, and When the Curtain Falls, but the song never really gains quite enough altitude. What's most interesting to me here is how it feels like Greta Van Fleet is channeling another band who have paid homage to their 70s predecessors in the past, and that's Jane's Addiction. I hear bits of that throughout the song, and then the breakdown on the bridge really hammers it home. After that, uh, things seem to fall apart a bit as the song turns into kind of a chaotic, noisy free-for-all at the end. I also should point out that I don't dig the jolting or stammering kind of thing Josh does with his vocals on the chorus here. It's kind of annoying. On the penultimate song on the album, the band swerves back into the land of Spinal Tap. It's painfully obvious that they're trying to write lyrics that evoke 70s mysticism, but here it plays with all the subtlety of a 70s shaggin' wagon with an airbrushed dragon painted on the side. It's a real shame because for most of the song, I actually like the music. These guys are at their best when they just straight up rock it out. But the cheeseball lyrics accented by eye-roll-inducing background vocals that are supposed to be haunting are all pretty hard to ignore. Finally, the album closes with Anthem, a song with the most overtly, you know, peace and love message of anything on the album. For the most part, I think this track actually manages to get the balance right, with an acoustic guitar-driven hippie vibe that is so earnest it could have fit perfectly on the most recent Ray LaMontagne record. I don't think it's the best choice for an album closer, though, and the track does seem to sabotage itself in the end with a cheesy sing-along chorus. In the end, even though I think Greta Van Fleet veers dangerously close to classic rock parody more than I'd like, I still have to say that I had a lot of fun with this album. Of course, I had a lot of fun with Spinal Tap, too, but somehow Greta Van Fleet manages to keep from teetering over the brink more often than not. Supposedly, they wrote and recorded most of this album in a rushed two-week time span. I think that shows very clearly sometimes with a number of tracks that seem to nail the formula, but it's still a formula. And while many of the band's detractors are wondering if we'll ever get what they'd consider original music from this band, I'm far less concerned about that. I'm okay with them staying in this lane. 
I just want them to work harder on creating throwback jams that rely primarily on quality song craft rather than on well-worn nostalgic cliches. I'm willing to suspend my patience with this debut album, which is more generous than many rock fans have been. But their sophomore effort will definitely need to be much more than more of the same. So I'm giving Anthem of the Peaceful Army by Greta Van Fleet an X rating of 6 out of 10. It's a fun old school rock and roll album that borders on novelty. Let's just hope next time we hear more inspiration than imitation. All right, as promised, here's a quick unboxing of the CD. Here's the front cover and the spine and the back cover. I like the movie poster style credits on the back. Greta Van Fleet presents Anthem of the Peaceful Army. Here's a look at the CD and the art under the CD tray. Finally, here's a look at the CD booklet. I'll go ahead and flip through the pages here for you now. Don't forget, if you want to add Anthem of the Peaceful Army by Greta Van Fleet to your music collection, you can find an Amazon ordering link in the description below. Once again, my name's Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, plus check out some of these other videos that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.